Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to Junior Doan's The Spark. I'm Junior Doan, thank you for joining me. My guest today is Marie Clough, President and CEO of the Ann Arbor Art Center, which was founded in 1904 and one of the oldest visual art organizations in the state of Michigan. Welcome Marie. I would like to know about the Ann Arbor Art Center. Tell me everything. Everything? Well, everything in a nutshell. Great. <laughs> Well, the Ann Arbor Art Center is a 110-year-old arts organization in downtown Ann Arbor. Um, we're the third oldest arts organization in the state of Michigan. We've been in downtown serving the community since 1974, and I think it's fascinating because we bought that building for $74,000 in 1974. So, uh, and I can only imagine what the building is worth now, but we've been so fortunate to be part of an amazing community full of arts and culture. I think somebody described us as part of the fabric of this community. Oh, what a compliment. It was a lovely compliment. It is a compliment. It's actually the only place in Washtenaw County, and I always think of the building, because the building has three stories, right? So it's the only place where an artist can sell art, show art, and teach art. And it's the only place where all of us can come and buy art, see art, and learn art, and that's what happens inside the building. Cool. And a lot of things outside the building, too. I like that, all-purpose. It's an all-purpose, yes. Who, who are the people that come to your facility for the shows, for buying, or for classes? You know, uh, at any given day, you can walk through that building, and here's what you might see. If you walk into a class, uh, and it's a child, let's say it's a, a camp for children. Here's what's really fun. So now you have anywhere from ages uh, 5 to 12. They're sprawled out on the floor. They're creating art. They're not afraid. They're having fun. There are no rules. It's just laughter and smiles. Then you might walk into another classroom and see teenagers taking a graphic novel academy. And in that class, you'll see teens anywhere from 13 to 18, very serious. They're there to learn a skill. They're there, there to create. They're there to accomplish something. Then you leave that classroom and you go into another classroom and you might find a group of um, moms or dads whose kids are in school, right? And they're just taking some time for themselves, right? It's a nice social hour. They're learning. They're doing a watercolor class. Um, then later in the day you might come in and it's a group of seniors and they're just having a ball. They're more like the five-year-olds. They're just kind of sprawled all over having a good time. They have nothing, nothing to prove, nothing to gain. They're this, there because they really want to. So everybody comes to the All center. purpose. It's all per I say we serve K to gray. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. So tell us about the Graphic Novel Academy. One of the passions and one of the, probably the biggest draws for me to come to the Art Center was I didn't really see a lot of mixture of art and technology and my background is technical. So I said, you know what, this is a wonderful opportunity for the community. And we all know the young people are way yes. more comfortable than we are. So we started with you know, a several generous donors, what's called the Roseanne Hebler Brown Art and Technology Lab. And so we have uh, 12 MacBook Pros and we have wonderful instructors who have the kids come in. We also have adult classes, but they come in and they get to draw their own superhero or whatever they want, and they can create a comic book by using the computer, using drawing skills. One of the commitments we have in the class is that there'll always be a fine art component to those classes. So whether they're drawing or they're painting characters, maybe they're building characters out of clay, 
you know, so there's a fine art component, and then we weave in technology. So, and it's isn't a there a, another program or two under that auspices of um, of uh, science and art? STEM, STEAM. Yes. What what this that umbrella yes. encompasses this? Yes. But the special academy. Do they teach other things as well? Certainly, we have a couple of instructors that worked with Pixar, with Disney, so they will do stop motion animation classes. And um, I have a cute story about that. Please when we tell us. first had the classes started, the little ones uh, created little animated films with jelly beans. And so they would create them, and in the beginning of their little animation, there was lots of jelly beans, and at the end, there were only a few because they ate them. But <laughs> <laughs> So, but they can make little animated films. We have families that come in that create an animation as a family. So, uh, interesting. Yeah. You mentioned you have a scientific background and experience. Would you talk about what it is and how that informs your view of the world? I have an engineering degree. Yes. But I also was very interested in finance. And although I can tell you in the beginning, I never really wanted to be an engineer. I always felt like the biggest value would be to bridge the world because I felt like you're an engineer or you're a business person. So I did a little bit of both and always thought in my life I want to be the bridge between the two worlds. And I don't know why I kept came up with that thought. It didn't take a lot of time, but that's exactly what I've been able to do is bridge worlds by having a technical background and a business background. And now I have an art background. So I bridge all the worlds together. Do you have to talk differently to an engineer than, say, an artist? Do they compute differently mentally? One hundred percent. I have to be very careful of who my audience is. It's interesting. Um, I, I break them into two things. They're truly just creative, and they want to talk about the artistic process. And then there are people that just want to talk about the numbers and the finances and how is this business model going to survive and how has it survived for a century and what are you going to do for the next century. So I'm, I'm probably more comfortable in that arena, but I'm getting more and more comfortable with the creative side. And the process is very different. People are different. How do you get along rather than get obstruction for your ideas? Similar to you, I really do love people. I love getting to know them. Everyone's different. I like figuring out what makes them tick. And I like hearing their stories. So I, I don't really have, I don't, um, there hasn't been many where I've been really uncomfortable and not know how to relate to somebody. Maybe if they're super quiet. But other than that, I don't. How do you draw out a super quiet person? I try to stay a little more quiet myself because they'll let, I like to talk, so I'll talk right over somebody. So if they're very quiet, I just get a little quieter and try to ask them more questions that aren't a yes or a no answer. That are a yes or a no. That are not a yes or no. Oh, I not a people, yes. I think everyone kind of likes to talk about themselves, right? They're interested no, in telling I don't. Story. I don't think so. For the longest time, I didn't like to talk about myself. I would talk about ideas and projects and this and that. Yeah. Years ago, one of my friends said, I don't know anything about you. You would talk about ideas and books and projects. I said, what do you want to know? Well, well, maybe you should be interviewed. <laughs> Sounds like a good show. <laughs> well, be, it, it was different, but what she meant is fine on the books and fine on the projects and right. fine. I'm 50 years out. I'm thinking about the economy. Right. But she wanted something of me and what I cared about in my heart. You know, things I was either excited about, confused by, worried about. Nice. She wanted flow. Yes. And so I sort of switched a little bit <laughs> to more of that um, style with some people. Nice. Because I still get fascinated by ideas <laughs> and books and the rest of it. It's nice to right. have somebody right. to talk to. Yes. So I'm not sure that everybody likes to talk about themselves. But uh, sometimes I have a lot of people I know that watch the uh, women who watch the morning women's show. Uh -huh. I personally wouldn't want to do that because I'm busy with life. Right. But I understand if I'm going to talk to them, I need to not enter their world, but be mindful that it's important to them. Right. Just like my books are important to me, my ideas are important to me, what I'm thinking about is important to me. 
Don't you feel like there, I, I sometimes I think there aren't enough, there's not enough years left in my life to do all the things I'd love to do. Well, maybe you'll live double time. I hope so. I hope they figure all those little bots that go in your body and fix everything that's wrong so I can just keep going. I tell my doctors I want to live, I tell everybody, to 116 to 117. And, you know, please, you know, let the <laughs> research, with a good mind right. and a good body. Right. And it's not that I'm, uh, I, I think it's good to extend possibility. I, I mean, just this very last week, a friend of mine woke up dead. And you can't tell when that is going to happen in your life. I'm sure, I, I just don't know the details, but I, I, you can't know when it ends, whether it's now or 116. Right. So make your plans, prioritize, and live them. Live. Yes, right. I, I think, get pleasure yeah. in the moment. I'm right. big on that. I agree you know? with you. Uh, find something you like, because otherwise you'll fixate on what you don't like. You're right, I don't you're think right. that's so smart. Well, you know, that's a great thing about being, the, I think one of the greatest things that has ever happened to me is that I, I found myself in, in this position with this amazing art center. I have learned so much of another side of life that I never knew existed. You know, I think that artists are the bravest people on earth. They face a blank canvas. And whatever they decide to put on that canvas is there to be judged by everyone. Right? In math, generally speaking, two plus two is four. There's no interpretation of that. And so I admire how brave they are because at any given show that's happening at the Art Center, I may stand in front of a piece of art and someone will walk by and truly tell me how amazing that piece of art is and why and what it means to them. And then they'll walk by and the next person will come and just say terrible <laughs> things about it, you know, that it's junk. So imagine that everything we do is just judged like that. Anyway, I'm really happy. You know, I'm, I'm really thinking about that from two sides. One side, is the visitor who's looking at the potential sale visitor. I think it's good to be true to what animates you visually, if you can pay for it or go back several times in the museum. It fills you in a yes. certain kind of way. From the artist's point of view, I think that conflates two steps that you shouldn't conflate. One is the creative process, right. and the second is will it sell. So when it drifts to that, may lose a touch of the creative process. I remember a friend of mine is a glass artist, mm -hmm. and decades ago, years ago, he told me he, he's Jewish, and his grandfather was Orthodox. So however many times the grandfather would pray during the day, and he would say, he said to me that when I get creative, I believe that what I am doing is going to the place my grandfather went. Oh, wow. Interior, you know, I didn't really say it, but attention or feed mm -hmm. from the divine or the whatever we're calling this. Mm -hmm. And it's only after that does he feel he can flow. Now, sometimes he gets a commission, so, you know, sure. there are but sometimes he's just doing it. And I've, I've wondered how, how much that, in all of our lives, you don't have to be an artist right. to be an artist in your life. An art, <laughs> that we're all artists of our own life, right? Yes, I, I feel that frees me a lot to say I'm, I'm the designer of my life. Right. I can't control everything, no. but I can certainly control a few things. Well, there's, there's a lot of times, a lot of art that gets shown at the Art Center is not for sale. Artists I don't. So it, it is interesting. I think I'll now go back and look at those pieces versus the ones that are for sale and see if I see any measurable difference in that. Because a lot of art is not something that someone would want to buy, but it was something that someone wanted to create. And so, yes, yes I respect that process. For and that I think there's, uh, there's a variation, or is there, are there variation in styles of what people are attracted to over time since you've been there? I, yes, I think someone's body of work, like you said, it informs them over time. I, I really think a lot of the current events that are going on in the world are informing a lot of artists' work. And I, they've done that for years, right? If you go into museums, I was over in uh, Italy 
this past summer, and I went through museums there, and you just look, you know, the themes change, um, the moods change, and I, I think that's another beautiful thing about art, is it's a way of, of expressing without words, right? Expressing their viewpoint, but sometimes viewpoint. it is said their viewpoint anticipates the future or describes the culture. My late husband, I took him on an art tour in New York once years ago, and it was a, the art was all very negative, and we were in the woman's apartment, and she, you know she was saying just what I said. They they described the culture at the time and are coming up, and Ted, who was an engineer, raised his hand quietly, <laughs> and when she called on him, he said, "I'm an engineer." He said, I'm very optimistic about the future and what's going on, and I can tell you why. And in that moment, in that moment, I thought that's a learning lesson for the artist, and it's a learning lesson for me. Good for him. Yes. And, <clears throat> and there was a second engineer on this tour, because once Ted spoke, he said, I'm an engineer, too, oh. and I agree. And so. You, you have to be somewhat modest, <laughs> I think. Right. <laughs> that your view is the view of everybody. And, right. Uh, 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 even my own life, I, my views I know correspond and then don't correspond <laughs> to <Right>. um, <clears throat> several of the people I know or read about or something like that. I don't think they're deep enough or whatever. I'm, I'm thinking like that. But I, I thought about the art side, I think it does, it gives you a kind of different bliss if you respond right. to it. Mm -hmm. And it's, at least for myself, it gives me a, a feeling of expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, but anything does, you know, Beautiful Cloud does that too. Right. And we, um, I'm lucky because I'm in the art center every day. So a show will go up and, you know, you might come to see it in a day, but I get to see it for the entire time that it's there. And even as, the weeks go by, I might feel differently about a piece because now I've seen it every day, I've walked by it, I've had more of a chance to study it, and so in a way, I just feel a, uniquely lucky that I have that opportunity to do that and really interact with the art. Who would have ever said that about me years ago because my background is do not... Do you think I, you're adventurous? Oh, I think life is an adventure. I'm all in. I'm tell geared up and that. ready to go. You tell, speak about that. Um, I, I'm a cautious ri risk taker, I would say. Um, I don't know, I like to feel different things. I like to meet different people. I like to learn about different people. I was never one of those people that wanted to say, um, you know, where do you want to be in five years? I mean, I might be able to say some things. I need to be able to feed myself and, you know, things like that. But I never wanted to say, I want to be here. Because I was always afraid if I said that, I might miss something really cool that would go this way or this way. And I'm fine with wherever it takes me. I'm pretty happy to do things. My favorite thing is to do something I don't know how to do. Interesting. Oh. In what area? Anything. It doesn't matter if it's cooking, it's building something, it's running an art center, it's um, anything. I, I like to learn new things. And I, I, have no, I have no fear of failing forward in life. I, if, if How did you get to that point of view? I have no idea. Because I think uh, I, I had nothing to lose for most of my life, right? And so Interesting. What right. did your mother preach, who's here in the audience today? <laughs> you know, I also feel very lucky that um, she was just a great mom, and she didn't say, you should do this or you should do this. I really felt like the world was my canvas, and she was just the most supportive person of it. Whatever it was, there were some things she didn't like. But for the most part, she was encouraging of all things. I'm not sure I carried that forward as a mother as much as she did. But what was your approach? I was kind of strict. Uh, you know, a little, little How more. Was you strict? I, I don't. I what was, was you strict about. Well, maybe because I was. Um, some of the experiences I had in life, I didn't want my kids to repeat. Yeah. <laughs> So my mom just must have had really good karma her whole life because she wasn't worried about uh, me repeating any mistakes that she made. But anyway. Oh, interesting. Maybe. Are She's you children interested in art? 
Now, um, interestingly, my husband was an engineer. Uh, I'm an engineer, and my son is an engineer, and my daughter is not an engineer. And I would say that she was creative, and nobody understood her, which was a really interesting and challenging way for her to grow up. So I think, in some way, she's really vindicated that I run an art center because she was always good in art. And I was always like, but why, you know? So has the conversation changed between you? Uh, most definitely. I actually am learning to uh, celebrate who she is because she's very, very different than me. And sometimes that's still challenging. She's probably my biggest challenge in life because we are so different. Interesting. So how do you learn to build that bridge? I think it, it burns up and you rebuild it and it burns up and you rebuild it and then maybe you get a boat and then you just <laughs> swim to the other side. Uh, it's, it's a work in progress, I would say. Because you have a sense of adventure, do you find after a while the adventure is over and it's getting more predictable and maybe time to change, time to leave? Sometimes I do feel that way. Uh, I think if I felt any time in my life when I feel like I've, I've learned all that I can learn about this or that I want to learn about this, then I would move on. But this, the Ann Arbor Art Center, I don't feel like I'm ever going to get bored there, but I will. It will be, there will be a time when it's time for the next person to take on, and I'm okay with that, and I'll be ready for that, and it'll be ready for that. Well, you have a new building down there now, so we, that's we have a, a lot, big project. Yeah, we have a lot going on. We're expanding because demand. Ann Arbor is growing, and the demand for uh, the appetite for visual art and visual art experiences is really expanding. And just as an example, in the last two years, we've gone from 500 people on a wait list to almost 800. And this is to take classes and to attend events and to have art experiences. So it's huge. It is huge and it's exciting. So, you know, this is a really talented team of people that are very passionate about bringing arts to life and they do a good job and it shows because a lot of people want to do it. Do you have an association with the Museum of Art that's on the campus? You know, we don't and we should. Uh, they have a new director and I'm. Uh, and I'd like very much to meet her. So she's on my list of people to collaborate with. And I know that um, the University of Michigan has some pretty, they just, it just came out in the paper that they're very interested in um, bringing art, more visual art, into the, um, into the Ann Arbor, the community, and through campus. So I am going to connect with them. It's on my tickler list for this week to figure out what is the best avenue to find out how we can partner in the community for art. So. Yeah, it'd be wonderful if some of the artists were attractive to them and later on give them a show or we something like that. We do have shows of uh, former students of U of M, art students, the Stamp School. So we will uh, we show their art quite often at the Oh, interesting. Very we are that venue, that place where they can go if you're not a student. So we're, that's where we're a little unique. We're open to anybody. What? Oh, as a, opposed to a formal art school? Correct. Oh. Interesting. I they can teach and show and sell their work at the Art Center. I don't know if your new building is big enough. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, you know what? That's the beauty because we also have a very vibrant art and public program now. What is that? That is where we're going to just explode right outside of our building and start collaborating and partnering with the community to have art visible into the community. Let's, you know, it could be murals, sculptures, um, ephemeral art could be light shows at night. We have all kinds of really exciting stuff that we're, that we're working on. That sounds interesting, a light show. What would that be about? Well, if you go to Montreal, or Montreal, and I can't remember the name of it now, um, they do a show at night where they have projections. So there are actual art images and people walking projected on the side of buildings. And you can go all <laughs> over town and see these at night. It's just stunning. Anyway, I saw that, I think it was somebody showed it to me a couple weeks ago. I was, oh, I was at a conference. And anyway, that's going to happen in Ann Arbor. So I sent it out. Do you know about Son of Lumière? This is, a, I think, a French where you see it in Europe sometimes. They play music, classical music, and the lights kind of yes. follow the. Yeah. yeah. So there should, be out, out, there should be lots of art outside of the building, not just inside. Oh, interesting. So first command. Well, if you took technology with that, what would you do? 
Well, that's all about the projection, right? What type of projection are it? What kind of cameras do you have to have? Where do you put them? How do you, who's going to, you know, create whatever is rotated on that? It's, we'll have to partner with all kinds of people in the city, and I think everyone will get excited about it. It's a perfect opportunity to um, get everyone excited about. Oh, I it. agree with that. Very good. Well, thank you very much. So, what would have we learned here? I think that one of the things is <laughs> to be lucky to be born with a sense of adventure and a, um, a low level of fear of disappointment or failure. She's turned that into a learning experience and she predicates her life on hard work and going into the unknown, but also being very, what do I want to say, um, very excited about people people who she finds the best in and learns to talk to them, very quiet people, she talks less. More exuberant people, she also uh, matches. I like a lot that she's an engineer and then went into management as a, another degree because different skills, different way of being in, in the world. I like also her mother who for the most part let her follow her passion and I liked her that she also made the channels a little more narrow for her children. Um, you have to, times change and uh, personalities are different. I think that the real thing you can learn is that it's just, the world is big and you can do a lot of things if you have the interest, if you have the passion, and if you have the ability to continue to do the work, do the work. So as I say every, Every week, please go out and do something kind for someone you know, someone you don't know. Hold a door, smile, be kind. Everybody needs that, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. To contact Junia, send her an email at juniadonesthespark at gmail.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadonethespark.com. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Junia Dones the Spark. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.